Welcome to the Invest with Clarity podcast, where you will learn how success in investing, as in life, is the result of absolute clarity. Mark Pearson of Nepsis in Minneapolis, Minnesota, shares his passion for portfolio management and commitment to transparency and communication to allow investors to fully understand what they own and why, bringing them to clarity in their investments. And now, here are your co-hosts, Matt Halloran and Mark Pearson. Hello and welcome to another Invest with Clarity podcast with Mark Pearson. Now today, we're going to find out what makes Mark Pearson worry. Mark, you know, really, yes, uh, what, I, I, let, let's talk about this. I mean, this is interesting that this is the topic today because as we were prepping, I thought to myself, I don't know if I've ever heard you use the word worry and we've been working together for a while. Well, is it possible there may be some sarcasm in that? <laughs> I've never, ever heard you be sarcastic. I mean, have I ever been sarcastic on this podcast? I think I think you are sarcastic in life, not just on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about this. I because, resemble that remark. Well, so thank you, you. you do. Let's talk about this, though, because you, you would think... Right, that that you, as a financial services professional, as a you know, as somebody who's been in the industry for a long time, who's seen a lot of stuff, that there would be cause to worry, and in fact, I mean, we hear it in the news all the time. So, so walk us through this. Talk about these these different things that you look at when it comes to worry. Go ahead. So that's a great question. Uh, there are multiple things that make me worry. And of course, for those who have followed our pack podcast for a while, you know, Matt, that Nepsis means ultimate clarity, that our ultimate goal is to change the investment world one investor at a time, helping them invest with clarity and hopefully enhancing their ability to accomplish their investment planning goals. And what really makes me worry is every time I turn on the TV, everything is negative. And as we're doing this podcast right now, uh, the media has a predisposition to speak like the cup is only half full uh, or a, a half empty, and everything is about doom and gloom. And I do think that the the phrase or the old adage that fear sells, right? That fear gets people to react, right? And to react in a manner without thinking through what they're doing because they're making emotional reactive decisions as opposed to sound proactive decisions. Why is it that when we talk about recessions, when we talk about volatility, everything is negative and it's reactive when the reality is that volatility should be proactive, that you should be a proactive investor during volatile periods. But hold on, that sounds to me like somebody has to do some work here in order to be proactive. Well, well how important is your money to you? Well, for me, I, mean, that, I think that's <laughs> part of the problem. Yeah, totally. I mean, you just nailed it on the head. Yeah. That the problem is that investors work super hard for their money their entire life and they expect results with doing as little work as possible. And think about that. They expect great results for doing as little work as possible when it comes to their money. I mean, I've said this to you before, and I'm going to say it probably a thousand more times as we work together. You know, what, what, how is it that investors don't understand that when you don't know what you own, that that may be one of the greatest investment risks that you are uh, uh, that you have. Mm-hmm. I mean, because when you don't know what you own and potentially don't know why you own it, volatility creates what? Uncertainty. Mm-hmm. But if you're sitting there and everything's volatile and everyone's talking negative and prices are going down, your thought process should be a lot like Warren Buffett. I mean, all this recession talk lately, Warren Buffett's 89 years old and recently said, I hope we see three more recessions in my lifetime. Wow. Why, why is that? You think about the successful investors out there. Uh, Sir John Templeton, uh, Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett. These are kind of the, you know, grandfathers of, if you will, of successful investors, right? 
What do all three have in common? I believe that, number one, they had viewed investing as investing in great businesses. Number two, I believe that they viewed volatility as opportunity because they knew what they owned and why they owned it. And number three, they had a buy discipline and they had a sell discipline. And they stuck to a process. And today, I think we are taking investors down the primrose path of everything is easy. Make everything cookie cutter. Make everything as cheap as possible, right? And and uh, let, let's cookie cutter it as much as possible. Now, when you work hard for your money, do you want things as easy as possible? Well, things aren't easy as... prefer to have things uh, as logical oh, yeah. and as um, uh, correct as possible, right? Well, you do work hard for your money, so therefore you want your money to work hard for you. I want to go back to something that you said, though. Which is, you know, uh, everybody wants things very cookie cutter and, and not to sound mean, because that's not my intention, but it seems like a lot of financial services professionals want it to be cookie cutter too. You know, advisors really haven't had to do a lot of work for the past, yes. what, 11 years? I mean, really, uh, let's, let's just look Thank at this. You. It's 2019. Thank you for putting the ball right on the tee for me. Oh, hey, that's what I'm here for, brother. I, I think this is one of the unintended consequences of modern portfolio theory. And I think we've briefly talked about this, but I think the advent of, mar- of, of modern portfolio theory has, quote unquote, made the job of the advisors easier for managing money, mm-hmm. quote unquote, managing money, by the way, because let me, let me explain what I mean there. You know as long as you've been in this business, that many financial advisors view themselves as, poor, as money managers. Why manage money for a living? Well, uh, no, you manage allocations. Because when you go to a financial advisor who says, I manage money for a living, I say, oh, really? What's your largest holding? <laughs> they can't answer it. They usually give you a mutual fund or an exchange-traded fund. And modern portfolio theory has allowed financial advisors the ability to qu- more quickly asset allocate, i.e. cookie cutter, a portfolio that to be quite blunt about it doesn't take a lot of work. And so what it allows the advisor to do is it allows the advisor to go out and get more clients, spend time marketing, getting more clients as opposed to managing the money. Now, I'm not going to throw all advisors in that bus because a lot of financial advisors do spend the time knowing their money managers, knowing how well their money managers do they they understand their investment philosophy and strategy but a lot of them don't and at the same time it still funnels down to the foundational component matt that investors don't know what they own and they don't know why they own it and their expectations are such that when they walk into their financial advisor's office the financial advisor is going to give them all the excuses why something didn't do well for the last year when the reality is that's not what the investor should be focused on the investor should be focused on what is our buy discipline? What is our sell discipline? If we have structured our portfolio accordingly, right? We have asset allocated it accordingly relative to our tolerance for risk and and volatility. Notice I don't put risk and volatility as the same thing. Risk is different than volatility. We don't view volatility as risk. We mm-hmm. view volatility as opportunity. In fact, we view the greatest risk for the investor is not knowing what they own and why they own it. So the risks are, what's my largest holding? What impact does it have on my portfolio? What's the largest sector I'm invested in? What's the impact of my portfolio? And am I asset allocated accordingly, right? So the the industry, which touts modern portfolio theory, which touts buying all these mutual funds and exchange-traded funds in your portfolio, is designed to make the job, frankly, easier for the advisor but in turn, it actually makes the job harder for the advisor. And I'm going to explain that in a second because it, you, you get this feeling, if you will, that the advisors just picks his favorite funds and then he asset, asset allocates it within the appropriate style box. Mm-hmm. Now, do you want to know why it actually makes their job more difficult? I do. Because this has been my experience here at Nepsis. My experience here at Nepsis is that when we've had volatile periods when we've had corrections, when we've had uncertainty, 
that the psyche of the majority of the investors that work with Nepsis do not get worked up nearly as much as the investors who have mutual funds and exchange traded funds. Because the clients at Nepsis, the investors at Nepsis, understand the power of knowing what you own and why you own it. They understand the power of volatility. If I'm sitting there looking at a, you know, a Johnson and Johnson or, you know, a United Healthcare or Cisco Systems, whatever that company is, they understand that, you know, this is not a company that's really going to go away. And if, if Nepsis follows their buy discipline and they follow their de- uh, sell discipline and they've asset allocated me accordingly, I'm not going to worry about short term volatility. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you the greatest example of all. Hmm. That's the greatest example, but one great, very good example. Last year in 2018, because of our position, you know, in Zest, right? Uh, and our positions in China, the underperformance of our portfolios, and also in 2017, where we significantly underperformed any metrics you want to use. By the way, don't you think it's interesting that the portfolio manager literally just said on a podcast <laughs> that for two years in a row, he completely underperformed? Yeah. Isn't that bizarre to you? I, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever had a podcast guest who is a financial professional say what you just said. Yeah. You want to know why? Because I have confidence in the process and I know exactly why the portfolios were down. And we communicated that with the clients. And frankly, the turnover from that has been very minimal. Mm -hmm. Now, for a lot of financial advisors, if they've had, you know, two years of underperformance, they think the financial advisor is an idiot or they think the portfolio manager is an idiot. When the fact of the matter is that we've had one position in our portfolio that's had a dramatic impact on why we were negative for two years but we knew what we owned and why we owned it. And of course you understand what that position is and you know, the state of that position and what's going to probably happen to our client's portfolio, which means that all that lost return over two years, not only will be given back, but they will be substantially better off because that position's performance, uh, we hope, believe, and think that is going to be off the charts. The ability to know what you own and why you own it is so powerful. So what makes me worry, uh, besides all the negative talk, is investors are their own worst enemies. Hmm. Investing is not for amateurs. Be- and, and by the way, uh, my hope is, my hope is, uh, in light of the huge news yesterday out of the retail brokerages, did you hear about that? Uh, no. So as we've discussed before, the race to the bottom, right, in fees, in ETFs, index ETFs and all that, uh, yesterday it was announced that um, uh, Schwab, I think it was Schwab or Interactive Brokers was going to zero commissions, zero ticket charges for investors. What? Today, E-Trade and Ameritrade followed suit. So now all the major brokerage firms... um, no ticket charges. Now, that's good and it's bad. And this is another thing that makes me worry. When an investor does not have to think about how much it's going to cost me to sell something or buy something, I believe it can, uh, it can provide an investor a position of making bad decisions because... They don't have to worry about a cost of doing it anymore. They can just do it. And so it may, ca- it may cause investors to make more irrational decisions because there's no cost around making the decision. Hmm. They, they don't think about the tax ramifications. They don't think about uh, what they're selling and why they're selling it and how it could be a mistake. They just view it as a pure transaction-based decision. So um, now that it's all going to be free, the good news to that part of the story is that maybe many investors will now go to a financial advisor who maybe wouldn't before and say, you know what, Uh, now that there's really no trading costs associated with doing this, maybe it would make sense for me to work with an advisor because trading costs won't be there either. There's still your advisory fees, right? But maybe that'll that'll change change the landscape. I, I certainly don't know. 
Okay, let, let's I, let's get back. I'm sorry, I, I'm going to interrupt because you, yeah. you, you you've skirted the issue of worry. What? But let's let's get back to this. So we understand how you can combat worry, but you as a human being, as a business person, have to worry about something, dude. What 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 is it? Uh, what do I worry about here at Nepsis? Uh, I worry most about investors making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I worry most about investors selling great businesses at bad prices. That's the biggest thing I worry about. Hmm. I realize it's pretty trite as, <laughs> I mean, well, but, but you're, it's, you're, con you know, it, you're I, consistent. I yeah. I have clarity. I mean, I, it, here, I'll give you an example. A client calls and says, I need $70,000. Um, and when you get me my $70,000, can you sell all the losers first, right? So I take the losses so I have the least amount of capital gains. You've probably heard that when you're in the business, right? Mm -hmm. You want to know why that's one of the dumbest things you can do? Why? Because number one... A portfolio has an asset allocation strategy. Every position you sell that's a loser may be the biggest sales stock, the stocks that are on sale in the portfolio in the first place. So why would you sell something when it's down if you believe in the long-term value of that business? If it's a loser, don't you think we would have already sold the losers? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So the investor says, hey, I want to lower my tax base. Well, maybe there's a sector. Maybe there's a country. China, for example, is not doing well. You want me to sell all your China stocks at a loss right now because you don't want to pay taxes on stuff. You're going to hold on to all the more expensive stuff, right? And the stuff that's on sale, you're going to take out, which could actually affect in a positive way your portfolio long term. This is why we say, no one stock makes or breaks the portfolio in the long term. Every position is owned in the portfolio for a very specific reason to accomplish a long-term goal. So that you don't think I'm skirting the issue of worry. The whole idea of what makes me worry the most is that we live in a world of pure negativity. We live in a world where everybody focuses on the negative and not the positive. For an example, we are in the longest Economic expansion in history. Did you know that? Hmm. From the longest in history. Okay. Average year amount of years before a recession is 11 years. We're now, what, uh, nah, you know, 12, 13 years, 12 years? Longest in history, right? Okay. So we're not only in the longest economic expansion in history, and while everyone sits there and prognosticates, postulates, and speculates about when we're going to see our next recession, do you know that's been 28 years since uh, Australia had a recession? Oh, 28 wow. 28 years. So, can we go 28 years without a recession? We sure could. And we're not in a recession. We're in an economic slowdown. There is a difference between a recession and your economy slowing down we still po have positive GDP. Hmm. So what makes me worry are things like the uh, media focusing on the negative. How about all of these newsletters that people spend millions of dollars on? This is what makes me worry, Matt. And hmm. they, all these newsletters do is prognosticate, postulate, and speculate. It, I, you know, let me be so bold to say that in my opinion, for many investors... It is no different than going to a casino and betting at a casino hmm. the way they have their money managed. They're gambling. They're guessing. Because every time you put your money into a mutual fund or an exchange-traded fund, you don't know what you own. You don't know why you own it. You don't know where the risks lie. Therefore, in my opinion, you are gambling. So in, in order to, to scratch the itch, let me buy newsletters that will say the same things that I believe in so I feel good about myself and that there's somebody else who believes what I do. Because if there's someone else who believes what I do and I end up being wrong, well, it's not just me. I mean, it's what everybody thought. That's how investors, don't you think that's how investors, you know, view things? Yes. Did I make, 
Am I going too hard on you? Today? No, no, I, I just didn't. no, you're not, dude. Uh, but am I a little too passionate today? Well, you you definitely have stepped it up some today, um, and and I like that because you know we are. You're absolutely right. There's so much negativity out there. They they, they don't look at and okay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hit rewind here. So yeah, because I lost you. Well, you you did just a smidge, but that's okay because I'm gonna try to get you back on this other piece, which is. Something that I believe, and that I know you believe from the whole idea of investing with clarity, let's just say that we have a recession, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Isn't that the great, just like you said earlier, isn't like one of the greatest buying opportunities possible for yes. people who have clarity? Okay, question. so so okay, I'm, I'm glad that you said that. Now, finally, to wrap up today's podcast, if you could explain to our listeners, hey, you don't need to worry because you have clarity if you work with us. Yes. But you do need to worry if you have no idea what you own and why you own it. What else should you say? Well, I think that's exactly it because recessions are a normal part of life and they are a normal part of economic expansion and contraction. Um, and if you're an investor, you look forward to recessions because recessions enable you to focus on your buy discipline and sell discipline. What so one one of the one of the uh, sell disciplines we have is we may sell a weaker position for a stronger position after it's gone on sale. We've used this example many times with many companies in our portfolio where we've sold one company in the same sector, bought another one because it went on sale and it's a stronger company, right? So recessions. And, and and to be quite frank with you, here's the interesting thing that I haven't talked about, which is probably one of the most important things to say. Generally, when a recession hits, the market's already had its correction. During recessions, actually, markets are up about 1.2 to 1.5% on average. They're not down. Hmm. Usually, markets are down about nine months or so before a recession happens. So if you think a recession is going to, by the way, we were down 20, you know, we were down what, uh, 12%, 11%, whatever it was in, in 18 Mm -hmm. in January of 19 in just late December, if you had invested with clarity, if you knew what you own and why you own it, you had the ability to buy more business on sale. It was a, it was probably one of the greatest sales you've had. One of the greatest opportunities you've had, frankly, since the financial crisis, because we experienced our first 20% pullback from September, December of 18. And that's the first time we've seen a 20% pullback since the financial crisis. You want to talk about opportunity. There it was. Mm -hmm. So if we're entering a recession right now, the corrections already happened. So I, I, you know, again, I don't think we're in a recession. I don't, I think we're a ways away from having a recession. I think it's just a lot of talk to get people, you know, focused on turning on the news. Cause guess what? When you turn on the news, then you see the advertisements and the news likes it when you do not turn in, to hear all the negative stuff because then you watch the commercials and then they get those advertising dollars. Now, I don't want to be a pessimist here, Uncle Matt, do I? No. Why would they ever want to do something like that? I, I don't know. It doesn't have anything to do with money, though. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what makes me worry the most, uh, Uncle Matt, is that people don't invest with clarity. Gotcha. They invest with emotion. Well, thank you very much for walking us through that today. Uh, if somebody wants to reach out to find out a little bit more about how they can invest with Clarity, what's the best way for them to do that? They can do it. I appreciate you uh, saying that. They can go to investwithclarity.com. Super easy. Investwithclarity.com. Click on any of the links to get free stuff. Uh, click on the link to talk to an advisor. We'd be happy to help you begin the road to Nepsis, the road to ultimate clarity. There's also another great link on the website for you to get your portfolio stress tested. Please make sure that you check that out, too. And if you have not subscribed to the podcast, click that subscribe now button below. And if you know somebody who needs to hear this about what it's really like to work with somebody who doesn't really have the same worries because of they have ultimate clarity, it can make all of the difference in who you are, what you own, why you own it, and where you're going. So for everybody at Nepsis, this is Matt Hallern, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. The content discussed is for informational purposes only. It is not a solicitation or recommendation for any securities that may be mentioned herein. Advisory services offered through Nepsis Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisor.